for those listening in that are working in a high performance uh, medical team, um, what are some common misconceptions when it comes to communication or, or challenges and, and how do you sort of solve those uh, challenges that we're trying to collaborate with and a new Great team together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think one of the things I'm saying is there, there certainly are differences that, are that would come from any group that you work with. But there's a massive but there for me, and that is often that, and then the but or the, or the what for is about, well, first of all, if, if they are differences of opinion, they're excited about it. Like it's a really good thing. Embrace it and seek to understand all points of view. And, um, you know, I, I say to people all the time, if you're starting to feel wound up about something, you're starting to feel emotional about a difference of opinion, that's a good thing. Sit in it and listen to it. How often is it that you're focusing on on trying to enhance you know, collaborative thinking and, and integration um, before, yeah. I guess, giving them advice? Yeah, or that's the first step is get, like, you want to get everything on the table and get everything out of them that we can because I said it all or 90% of the information is there. There's just been a little glitch. There's just been a little a little door not opened or a little path not taken that's seen a, a tendon compliance or stiffness lag behind muscle strength. Or some muscles get stronger, but one other muscle lag behind. And it may think, oh, we going. Secondary imbalances have been generated. It's now leading to another symptomology or something like that. You know, so just mm -hmm. just getting all of the information out of them on the table is the most important thing because often then it's a matter of, well, what if we did this? And in your answer. In terms of meetings, what's your take on that? How, what, how do you sort of conduct effective meetings where people feel comfortable to share their opinions and challenge each other? Um, yeah, so effective meetings, what, what's your take on uh, an duration perhaps or yeah, big rock meetings, comes running a meeting? Meetings meetings can be a part of that. I mean, we're also busy and we can get caught in a meeting that goes for three hours and just say, oh my God, I'll never get that back. But they... they they are a necessity, but short and sweet is better and well agended and concise. So there's the the short patrol right top to tail on the on the nest, the priorities up the top, which three the guys in the bottom and if we're all on the same page, I think the weekly meeting like that is really important. And out of that might come you know, an awareness around well gee, we really need to talk about Jack a lot more. Let's do that afterwards. So let's do that at the end of the day. And how did the whiteboard um, method come to you? Uh, was that something that someone passed on uh, a previous info mentor, or is it something that came oh, wow. intuitively and through practice? That's a good, and you found effective. A good, a good example was working with Paul Hodges, Paul's a big whiteboarder. So in my very first meeting with him, so I called him and said, look, I want to look at lumbar pelvic hip control and sprinters, and I want to look at hamstring, I want to do this. And he said, well, look, get your butt across in at Prince of Wales Medical Research Institute where I'm working at the moment. We'll spend a week working in the lab together. We'll get to know one another. We'll talk through what your questions are, and we'll see whether or not this is a PhD. Mm -hmm. So I just roomed off a week to patients and flew over to Sydney and spent a week with Paul over there in the lab and... Awesome. It was great fun. But it was often um, either on a whiteboard or while we're drinking red wine at a restaurant on a napkin. Um, he's a very clear thinker. So he would always be writing down, so this flows from this, flows from this. And it's almost happy, expressions and so. Over your time, you you face a lot of cases for the first time, whether it be a complex injury, uh, and it's really challenging your processes because you haven't had a specific example of, of how to rehab that injury or... Uh, how to provide advice on that. What, what would be your process for practitioners when they're faced with a, a new problem uh, and yeah. to yeah, have that clear thinking and then to be able to act quickly because you might have to present on the athlete and start the rehab the next day? Yeah, you know. So, you know, you can't, you can't have enough knowledge. There's always going to be things you've never seen before, groans you've got to go down and you've never been down. And do it alone. No matter how smart you're up. Don't do it alone. Um, one, because two heads are better than mole. I bring in other people next to you. And also, 
do not wear the burden and the emotional strain of making a critical decision with a with an athlete or a piece of horse flesh worth millions and millions of dollars. Don't bear that responsibility on your own. Involve other stakeholders.